Hello, welcome to Cheese Puffs and Gravy. It's good to be back to do some more fun stuff here on the internet, on YouTube. But first, before we get into the fun stuff, it's time for a puff of cheese right here. Because it just puts me in the mood for fun. It's like an aphrodisiac for fun, the cheese puff. Once you eat one, you're ready for just about anything. Now, bear with me. It's extra cheesy today. The last few videos, I uh, talked about commercials. I talked about poop. And uh, I decided to go away from the poop because I don't want to become the poop guy. And who wants to be that guy, the poop guy? So today, wow, this is a really, this cheese puff is staying with me for quite some time. Uh, all right, I think it's gone. Okay, we can go now. Um, I'm going to get back into some more um, election comedy, election banter, if you will, because that's where the real fun is. And I normally talked about uh, Trump in the past, so today I'm going to start this one off with uh, creepy Ted Cruz because uh, let's face it that guy's face is oh it is the poster child for like stranger danger I mean that face it looks like it's like silly putty that's been left out in the burning sun for hours it's a uh, it's hard to look at it's a hard it's a hard face to look at I mean it is the face that's on the other side of that creepy glory hole in the worst adult theater in the country. It is the face that belongs to the guy who tells the girl her hair smells fantastic two minutes into their first date. That is the face that is peering through the window of your mother's house and watching her as she's changing her socks. I mean, that guy is the epitome of creepiness. Well, anyway, this past week or so, his wife Heidi drops this little nugget of information. Uh, after their wedding, they go on a honeymoon. They come back, and Teddy Cruz goes out by himself, and he purchases 100 cans of chunky soup. Yeah, you heard that right. 100 cans of chunky soup. And when his wife asked him, like, hey, Ted, why did you buy so much goddamn soup? He says, well, I didn't expect you to cook anything, and I guess it's meant he needs to eat, so he decided to buy 100 cans of chunky soup. That is so odd on on many levels. First of all, it's like a lunacy thing. Who goes and buys that much fucking soup, first of all? And if you're deciding to feed yourself, you would think there are so many other options out there besides chunky soup. I mean, did he have tunnel vision and just go right down the soup aisle and just buy all the chunky and just rifle it into his cart really fast and I'm getting the fuck out of here? Like, okay, in that same aisle, there's Progresso soup. They have good soup. You know, good, good flavors. He decided to, fuck that, I'm going all chunky. He could have went down and got SpaghettiOs uh, in the canned section there. SpaghettiOs, ravioli. I mean, come on, who doesn't like ravioli? Uh, frozen foods, um, TV dinners, hot dogs. There's so many options. Jesus, there's so many choices. But he just went chunky soup for everything, which says a lot about his personality. I mean, the man has no imagination. Let's face it. If your whole life you just wanted chunky soup, bland, boring. Or, or unless that's, that could be like his next campaign speech. Like, if you're, I want to be a president, uh, I will vow that every newlywed married couple will receive 100 cans of chunky soup as a wedding gift from the government. And that'll be my gift to you when you get married because we all love chunky soup. So, I don't know. I can't figure that one out. That's a bizarre, a bizarre thing that a person would do upon arrival after their honeymoon. Anyway, enough about Teddy Cruz. Let's jump into Donald Trump, the man who has just so many weird stories revolving around him. Lately, I think it was this past week, he was campaigning in Pittsburgh. And Donald Trump in Pittsburgh uh, it starts off with a speech. I went to school in Pennsylvania, and then he drops this nugget. How's Joe Paterno? <laughs> and, okay, if you just watch that little clip, how's Joe Paterno? You just you were hoping somebody would go like, well, Don, he's dead uh, for three years, and uh, I don't think he's doing good because he's probably warm food by now. But he he says something like, uh, "Is that coming back?" 
And I guess he was, he, later on he said he was referring to the Joe Paterno statue that was taken down, I am guess. But, I mean, come on, you, you could have worded that better than how's Joe Paterno doing. You know, I mean, Jesus, it's a statue. I don't know. Uh, and then, plus, he he's in Pittsburgh. He's not in State College. He's in Pittsburgh, and he's mentioning Joe Paterno and Penn State. You have to know your audience, Mr. Trump. You have to know where you're at when you bring up references to that region. You can't just drop Pennsylvania references when you're in, like, Pittsburgh and you're talking about State College. Um, idiot. And, you know, speaking of his speeches... I read somewhere where linguistic experts have said that um, he seldom uses three-syllable words. The majority of his, of his text is either one or two syllables. And that the way it's worded, the language, it's a fourth grade reading level. That is what he is uh, speaking at, a fourth grade reading level. Now, I think uh, Ted Cruz is at a ninth grade reading level on his speeches, but T Ted or Ted, Donald Trump is fourth grade reading level. Now, keep that in mind because I'm going to mention something later that's going to refer back to this. And I think the reason why he does this, this third grade reading level stuff, is he's appealing to the lower common denominator of these of the voters. I mean, he says stuff like, you're going to get so rich, your head's going to spin. Now, who would actually believe that? That if he becomes president, we're all going to be swimming in money. I mean, come on. That's such a bullshit thing to say to anybody that they would believe it. But he just keeps spouting out this nonsense and people keep buying into it like it's going to happen. Well, it's not going to happen. We're all not going to become super wealthy when Donald Trump becomes president or if he becomes president. It's not going to happen. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. And it's just... And the people that are buying into his presidency are... are, are I don't know. I, I don't understand why you have to be uh, an idiot to buy into what he's saying. But even the celebrity endorsements that are coming out lately. Now I know who gives a shit what celebrity is voting for who, but some of the names that are popping up who are endorsing Trump um, are kind of funny. I mean, last week I heard Kirstie Alley popped up and she's going to be endorsing Donald Trump, which eh, who really gives a shit? I mean, what has Kirstie Alley done since Cheers? Uh, diet? I mean, that's about it, really. Um, another funny one was Chachi, uh, Scott Bayo from... Uh, Happy Days, he popped up there and said that he's going to endorse Trump. They even interviewed him on Fox News. Like, really? You got the Chachi vote? That's that's mine. You know, I'm, I'm, yeah, we got Chachi. We got Chachi, Don. Chachi's in. We're good. Um, and on the interview uh, with Fox News, he said that he likes Trump because he speaks to him. And he's able to understand him when he speaks. Now, remember when I said Trump speaks at a fourth grade level? What does that say about Scott Bayo? What does it say? Scott says he speaks to me. I can understand him. Trunk speaks on a fourth grade level. So Scott, yeah, I wouldn't be too proud of that. Thank you. So anyway, now you have this other list of, of Trump celebrity supporters. And in the past, we had David Duke supported him, Louis Farrakhan, which is just who we all know about those people. But I have a list here of individuals, celebrities, who support Donald Trump. Sarah Palin. Enough said. Mike Tyson. Yeah. Hulk Hogan. Dennis Rodman. Ann Coulter. And Ted Nugent. Oh, I forgot one. Gary Busey. Yeah. It's like a who's who in the crazy house. I mean, I mean, if... Would you be proud of that celebrity endorsement list right there? I mean, all that's missing there is like Charles Manson. I mean, seriously, I mean, that is that a list of individuals who you would want behind you and saying, yeah, we want you for president. You're the man. I mean, it's it's kind of funny um, that these this is the people that are celebrities that are endorsed. I mean, there's other ones too, but I didn't read them all. And they're not any better than these, trust me. Um, I think Stephen Baldwin was in there and, and uh, Aaron Carter. <laughs> Yeah, I got the Aaron Carter vote. It's going to make me vault over the top. So, I don't know. This this thing is it's lunacy. After it's, it's just crazy what's going on with this whole election. Um, it's surprising to me that Trump is, uh, you know, as popular as he is because the man is, is basically, um, he's an idiot. Face the facts. I mean, he screams everything he talks. Have you noticed that? There's videos of him as far back as like 2008 pitching his vitamin program that he had. He's just yelling all the time. Like he's just always yelling. He has no inside voice. 
He can't talk quiet. I, 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 I think that, I mean, during sex, he must scare the woman. Like when he's orgasming, he must just go, I'm coming! <laughs> and the woman just like freaks out and... <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> okay. I got to end it there because I'm just going places where I shouldn't be going. So I'm going to end this with a cheese puff. And <laughs> hopefully... <laughs> you will forget that I yelled I'm coming. All right? You have a good day. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.